Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard. You're listening to Incredible Life Creator Podcast. Today, I have Dr. Gary Salyer on, and we have had him on in the past, but I want to go ahead and read his bio so that you remember who he is. Dr. Gary Salyer is a transformational relationship mentor. For the last decade, Dr. Salyer has been in private practice offering singles and couples heart center transformation so they can rewrite the rules for love in their brains and create a love that lasts. Dr. Gary speaks to a national audience as a featured expert on various celebrity TV and radio shows such as Hay House Radio and Coast to Coast AM. He is the author of the groundbreaking book, Safe to Love Again, How to Release the Pain of Past Relationships and Create the Love You Deserve. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Gary. Thank you, Dr. Leonard, uh, Dr. Kimberly. Thank you yes. very much. And today you're coming on because we want to talk about a hot topic. I say it's a hot topic because everybody in the world is in it right now. And yes. that is changes happening, things we've never heard of, never experienced before. And it's changing the way we experience our relationships. Oh, yeah. I mean, a year ago, would any of us have even imagined that our two our two vacation destinations would be front yard and backyard? (laughs) 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 Exactly. Nobody nobody imagined those those getaways. You know, oh my God, I got out to the front yard today. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes, it was my son called me the day Gavin Newsom, you know shut everything down he calls me says so so how does it feel being grounded (laughs) (laughs) and i thought well it's been a while (laughs) i know i'm ready to fly anywhere just anywhere at this point (laughs) oh yes and and on the other hand we make fun of that but uh, it's also very literally deathly serious Mm. you know we've got 200 almost twenty thousand people now Mm -hmm. dead um and uh, this is no, this is no laughing matter. This, and the weirdest thing about COVID is, yes, it takes out more older people, but it's a bit of a crapshoot. It's Russian roulette. We don't know whether we get the really lethal variety, or we get the stuff that makes us very sick, or we get the stuff that we could, you know, we could sleepwalk through. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's uh, that's it's. There's been, you know, there's been no. Uh, flu quite like that you don't really know uh, what you're getting at the bottom of the cracker jacks box so to speak yeah that is so yeah. true yeah and you know i think it puts people into a lot of fear and the question is should i stay in should i go out you know yes. should i wear a mask should i not wear a mask um you know uh, how do I continue with my life? Like, I, I really love connecting with people. So, you know, we can connect over Zoom, but that is not the same as being one-on-one with someone, you know, toes to toes, nose to nose, looking at someone. It's true. It doesn't do much for hugs. That's for true. That's it, for true. <laughs> I know, I miss the hugs. Yeah. You know, if you if your love language, thinking back to Gary Chapman, is words of significance, COVID isn't that bad, but if it's physical touch. That's me. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's a little, yes, I know it's, you know, and you think, well, you know, there's it. And they go, oh, give a virtual talk. Woo! And it's like, not the same. empty calories yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at exactly. best. Exactly. Yes. So let's just start out with, let's just start out with singles. Okay. So single people, a lot of them would like to meet another single person and become a couple. Yes. But right now, uh, how do you do that? Like, can you just do it over Zoom? Is it the same? You know, first off, let's just name what COVID has done. It took almost, it, it, within the first two hours of my son calling me and telling me, I, was, I hadn't heard it. <clears throat> said, We've all been grounded, right? Uh, I was thinking what it means for us. And it took me all of two hours to realize that 
you know, all loving relationships, all of our is a, is a matter of separating and going out and doing our big purpose and our dreams and our visions. And what we all need is to separate and then to come back to this beautiful place of belonging and, and closeness and intimacy where someone's got our back, where we can say, gosh, you know, I had this beautiful thing that happened and they celebrate or they go, or it was, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. Well, tell me more, honey. And you get this beautiful home port. It's separate, belong, separate, belong. And when I realized this, COVID split this thing right in half. For singles, now all of a sudden they're sheltering in place and it's way, way too much right to separate and no right to belong and no hope to. So there's hopeless. On the other hand, COVID did the exact opposite to couples. It said, uh oh, sheltering in place, no right to separate under each other's feet. Let's just put, you know, you in a super cooker called COVID, and they got no right to separate. Mm -hmm. And that all life, it's like breathing in and out. You know, there's this ebb and flow and too much intimacy is uh, too much intimacy. And the, the opposite is true, too much separation fields to hopelessness. Mm. So for, couple, for singles, you know, the idea is, well, how can I meet somebody if I'm afraid I'm going to die? Really what it comes down to, mm. you know? And I've had people, I've had a few clients say, I just want to work on myself. And that's a good plan. That's a good plan, you know, when it's over, because it's not going to be here forever. You know, and the Spanish flu wasn't and Black Plague wasn't, this won't either, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, on the other hand, you know, a lot of people, it gets very, very lonely. And th the hopelessness <clears throat> is, oh my gosh, I will never find love. What it does, if there was any hopelessness in the system to begin with, it just got magnified. Mm -hmm. You know, and what I can tell is that for, you know, it used to be people were going through apps and data sites, swipe left, swipe left, swipe left. And there was such a supply and demand thing, but now COVID has said, you know, we can't just swipe left indiscriminately. And there's a good side to that. Now people have to swipe down and get to know people. Their choices are more precious, who they meet. And it's actually a good a blessing in disguise. Now you have to take time to get to know somebody. To, and it's okay to be on to use Zoom dates, Skype dates, to get to know somebody for three or four weeks, two or three, where you, you know, I wouldn't say the five hour varieties, but you know, if you had three or four times a week you know, half hour, 45 minutes. You can get to know, get a feel for their energy and their lifestyle. You can ask them questions like, how do you feel about wearing a mask? And based on how they feel, you can say, well, does that jive with my levels of safety or not? And what I think couples can do, you can date, you can date, but the safety issue must be brought up. What, you have to know what your level of safety is, are you a strict social distancer? Do you, you know, want to take that risk or not? And when that happens, uh, you see, you have to talk. And then if the two of you really believe that that's, it's worth meeting, then you have to create what I call is a temporary couple bubble. All couples have this little bubble that says us versus them. But this isn't so much about the, the big commitment as it is a commitment to, to pair back to meet each other's safety needs where a guy might say, okay, I won't meet with my 10 poker buddies on Thursday nights. <laughs> so I can date you, right? Or a woman says, well, you know, I don't think I'm going to do my bridge party <laughs> if you're into bridge, right? Uh, and so they, just, they sit down and they have to decide how they create the safety so they can hold hands, mm -hmm. so they can kiss if they feel like it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not bad either, because what it's doing is it's going to separate out who separate out much earlier who can create a we, and who can't. So it can be done by using more Zoom dates, and when you get a little uh, further down the line, actually discussing and and agreeing to to actually socially distance, and you know you might quarantine for two weeks 
and then meet each other. So you can have a normal, safe relationship. And I think, and then you'll find out it's another way of giving the feeling of cherished and protected, which is one of those key feelings I talk about, about love. Yeah. And um, so if you're on a Zoom call with someone and you're just getting to know them, what are some important questions to actually ask besides the, the piece about the safety? Well, you know, I think at first, the first couple of ones, uh, I wouldn't make it too much about Zoom. Mm -hmm. I mean, about, about, about COVID, I should say. Mm -hmm. You know, 20 questions doesn't, is no way to start off a relationship. <laughs> just get, just, you know, spend a half hour getting to know each other, not 20 questions, but just getting a feel for how was your day, you know? You know, what was the best part of your day? You know, what are you most excited about in life? You know, things like that. And just learning to appreciate and share what's going on. And then if you like their energy, and people know that because, you know, this is a way of showing up energy. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, then you can ask some questions. So, you know, how do you feel about wearing a mask? And they, well, you know, I'm always wearing one. I think it's a safe deal. And you really like that, then that feels good. But in, and if they say, well, no, I don't like wearing a mask. That's really restrictive, you know. Then, you know, you may have a values conflict, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And um, one of the great quotes that I like is, you know, you don't argue over it. You, know, you don't bring data to a values conflict. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you can discuss what you might need, but you know, if they really want, they don't want to socially distance and work and you do, then they're not the right fit for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes total sense. And as I was thinking about that, um, in some ways that kind of dating, if you call it dating, is uh, you're gonna get more of what you, you want or at least know what you want. I mean, I've, heard people give me horror stories about yeah I went to meet her at the restaurant and this old lady walked in said, where's your daughter you know <laughs> oh my god yeah I, that's not the most attuned response but you know everybody has met somebody that gave 15 year old pictures right uh and they don't look anything like that and that's or you know, they've been photoshopped and all that other stuff. Uh, or the other thing is they've just, you know, when they photoshopped, they, they don't come, they've got those professional pictures um, and you can't tell what their energy is. It's almost better to see them in their natural, to see what their energy looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what's important. Um, and if you're on a Zoom call, by the way, so, you know, and guys I think are a little worse than women at this. Do not sit in a dark room <laughs> with no light. I mean, you've got to have the right lighting, you know. But I've heard of women say, my God, it was all dark. It was, you know, you know, I didn't know if I was in a sci-fi movie or a horror show. <laughs> you know. Interrogator, you know. <laughs> Interrogator. Oh, yeah. like, oh. <laughs> or they come in in just a t-shirt or a sweatshirt and you know, show up like you would on a date. Yeah. Make her feel important. You know, <clears throat> if you're a woman, put a little makeup on, makeup on if that's your deal, you know. But it's important to show up and to just relax. It's not 20 questions, just you're just getting to know each other. And mm -hmm. even if it's not right, the key of appreciation, gosh, I learned something about sushi tonight, mm -hmm. you know, or I learned something about, you know, horse car, you know, and horse car, but a uh, track, you know, car, uh, car racing or whatever it is, you know. You know, who knew you could do that with basil? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 And you can um, really enjoy people and their company, too, even if they're not going to be your, you know, one and only one day. Um, my grandmother, she just passed last year. But um, I remember that I was a time when I didn't have a boyfriend. She said, well, just make lots of friends, you know, just go out and make friends, get to know people, learn about them, um, and, and just enjoy the getting to know people. And she said the right one will, you know, kind of come to the surface or come out front. 
They they will. You know, most people they on a first date, and this isn't related to COVID, but it's exacerbated by it. You know, because we've got oh my god, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. Do not walk into a date thinking is this the one. This is not the time to be asking this is the one. You know, if you walk into a house and you've been told that uh, you're going to buy it. You've got a real estate person. You're going to be looking at that house like, well, gosh, look at that, that cracked plate in the wall. And gosh, mm -hmm. can you believe they painted the kitchen that color? And did you see all that over there? Is that something wrong with the foundation over there? But if you walk into a home and you've been invited for dinner and you're walking for a friend, you go, oh my God, I love the way you decorated the portico. Oh my God, you know, that, that hallway has just got some beautiful themes in it or whatever. You know, we approach it. That's how we should do. Approach it like we're a guest visiting someone's life. And what can we appreciate? The same way we would if we were invited to someone's house for dinner. Yeah, I love that metaphor. That is beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And if you do that, because the more welcome with joy, then they're more likely to relax. And then you're more likely to see, you know, who they really are. Because mm -hmm. judgment tells our attachment systems each and every time danger 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 threat and what happens to threat pull back not vulnerable nothing happens when you think oh it's 20 questions time great <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to play that game <laughs> yes exactly it's fun it just feels in impersonal it is and if you're out there yes it can be a little harder i just had a client that we went through this, I said, you know, several dates, emails, and then drew some Skype kids. And then, you know, and they decided how they were going to approach the couple bubble thing. And they went out for like, I think seven dates until she realized for some pretty good reasons, he was a super nice guy, but not the one, right? Um, and so this is doable. At first she was, oh, there's nobody out there. And then it turns out there's a lot of people that would like it. Mm -hmm. uh, now there's one thing, she you know, there was once she was talking about a guy he says he was i he really wants a monogamous relationship he wants it and he wants it and he really wants to start off monogamous he wants to, and i said is he wanting monogamous because he's monogamous or is he wanting monogamous because he's afraid of getting covid i said there's a big difference between those two yes, yes. <laughs> is this is, is or was he there's all because, is why he'd want the monogamous <laughs> yes <laughs> and he is <laughs> I, the one the way she was saying what he said it did it sounded like oh well for the time being we'll settle for this mm -hmm. you know and uh there was something about it and i thought okay well he wants monogamous I said, yes but would he want monogamous next year when this thing is over you know is it his nature or is it just you know so Take your time to get to know them, get a feel for their life. Find, and then you discuss the safety parameters, get on Zoom. Don't do five hour dates that gives false. I've heard of people, oh, we were on Skype, we were on Zoom for five hours. False, false read, false mm -hmm. intimacy. You know, you can't, that's, you can't really get a read. It's better to get half hour and 45 snippets a couple times a week. And then you get a feel for how they do their energy. That, that makes sense. Uh, I know the life. different energy throughout the week. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. The way it is in a real relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And and our our couples and, and, and married people are finding out what it is like to be very, very close all the time. It is. Yes, and that's the other side of the coin. Whereas singles, it's like, oh my God, I'm going to be isolated forever, right? For um, couples is like, you know, they've been using a lot of couples. I've had quite a few couples. My big surprise was I was expecting couples to call 10 to 15 years into the relationship. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting the numbers of clients that were married 25 to 30. Really? Because you, you kind of figure they've worked it out and they've made their peace with things, but not so. You know, what it was is, We've had so many distractions. We go out, we do our stuff, we work out. And without, now we're stuck together and there's no distractions. Mm -hmm. We're under each other's feet. 
And now the, the things that we use to distract ourselves from the long-term problems are staring us in the face and there's no place to go. This is why divorce rates happen a lot. And it's a growth opportunity to, to, for real intimacy. But, but now, instead of rubbing across that uh, irritating trait two or three times, now it's 25 or 30 times a day. And that becomes, and then you hear the word deal breaker come up. And a lot of times what they don't know is they've been doing this all, they're both setting up, they're doing their little irritating moves because that's what makes each of them feel safe. And it's how they find a new form of safety. But in COVID, uh, there's going to be a lot of feelings. I mean, feelings during COVID, it's all of us, are, there's so many feelings landing. Is it hopeless today? Is, is it frustrated? Is it anger? Is it righteous indignation at the news? Is it chaos? It's, it's like we're, you know, LAX and we're the air traffic controller and we have to land all these planes coming in at the same time. And we have to consciously play air traffic controller with our emotions. And we have, the way we do that was we have to make every feeling okay. If, if she wants to say, I'm losing my career, I'm never going to get anywhere. And you go, oh, honey, you know, you've gotten jobs before. That's not going to work. It's okay to make every feeling okay. And to really be with each other emotionally. Say, gosh, that must feel terrible. Tell me more about that. What else are you feeling? Not trying to fix it but to emotionally be there, make every emotion fine. And there has to be a kind of a sub rule is that only one person can freak out at a time. During, <laughs> someone's got to hold down the fort while the other one bounces off walls. <laughs> and the next, you know, the next time it's your turn to bounce off walls. But there's going to be these moments where I guarantee you, there's going to be a sense of fear, mm -hmm. a sense of, of, what could happen to my life? I've had, and during this time, I've had two or three moments where I thought, oh my God, you know? Once I, only once I woke up at three in the morning and for about 15 minutes, my mind is just racing all down, going down that rabbit hole, how bad this is going to get. And until I said, no, this is not Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> <laughs> you know? But everybody will have those moments. Mm -hmm. We got to make it okay. Uh, the second thing is you got to negotiate separateness. Mm -hmm. There has to be rules. There may be a room you go into in which when they go in there, they are entitled to separateness. That means no bids for communication, support, you know, or anything like that. Because one of the problems is couples make a lot of bids. Uh, for attention and support. In a, they've done researches of notice in a half hour dinner conversation, there can be up to 200 bids for attention. Mm -hmm. Too many bids in a day, if you put them together, is too much. There's got, no human being can deal with that much, especially if you've got homeschooling kids and you've got work from home. It's, it's too many bids for attention, too much going out and not enough going in. So there has to be some me time, especially for women. Most women feel like they're living on a planet where they can't get enough me time anyway. Right. right? So you've got to say, okay, this time, five to six in the evening, or you take the kids and I get there. That chair means don't bother me. Mm -hmm. You have to set up how much you need and the rules. And the rules must be around in you know, no bid when separate is separate. It doesn't mean, oh, honey, let me interrupt you. But, you know, unless it's a dire emergency, give each other space, negotiate it. Mm -hmm. And then the, you know, the third thing is uh, remember the positive feelings, not just the negative ones. There's studies that show that if couples that are in distress, if they just simply share for five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, Gratitude and appreciation for each other. Positive feelings of gratitude and appreciation. Mm -hmm. That uh, with and it's not just say I'm you know I really think you were kind. You give an example of what you noticed. That's the key. Not just the word, but an example. Within two to three weeks, that that relationship is spiraling up. Mm -hmm. So make all feelings welcome. Somebody holds the fort. Give separation time and work it out. 
and uh, make sure you're sharing the positive feelings. And if you're a guy, um, uh, you, if your wife has a career and she's homeschooling and she's trying to hold down her career, you got to help out. If you don't have the skills, if that's not what you do, man up. <laughs> you know, you would, you know, on a battlefield, you'd say, let's just get it done. This is not a battlefield. This is just kids that need help. It can be done. You know. It makes sense. And as you were talking, I had all sorts of pictures in my mind of the, the word that was coming up is boundaries having boundaries and when I thought about me time I thought well you know how in the hotel you put the do not disturb when you don't want anyone to knock on the door maybe we need some do not disturb signs so we can have a place where it's like okay for this next hour I'm in my do not disturb spot exactly exactly if you don't you're going to go nuts because the, the member the right I mean, if you go to work you know, and you got your office or whatever, you're, you're no, nobody walks in and just says, Hey, you know, I want to have a couple conversation with you. You're free of that. But when you're home, somebody walks out of their office, they're, you know, they're, they're sheltering in place and they're working from home. They just go to get a coffee like they, uh, you know, would, you know, at the office. And somebody says, honey, we need to talk. That is, you would never do that in an office. No. Well, I've got this thing. Well, you know, it's just walking away from me. That's the wrong way to do COVID. That's the wrong way. Um, you've got to really pay attention uh, to the need for separation for couples and, cu and for singles, it's the opposite. I talked about a right to separate and belong. Mm -hmm. And this is the right that creates we. You separate, but you come back to we. And it is important to create a we during COVID, you know. I, I, I had one young couple I work with, they had just moved in together, you know, young and love. We can, we can, and before COVID, a one room apartment looked really good. We get to be together. <laughs> oh, man, there was no place, <laughs> none, zero. You know, I was thinking, wow, there's cookers and there's super cookers. And this was one of those, you're right. And, um, you know, that needed to be more carefully negotiated because, uh, you know, get a, get a, one of those, you know, kind of Japanese walls that are made of anything. You know, <laughs> anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can so relate. Um, I actually got married uh, when I was in still in school. And when we first got married, he had a studio apartment beautiful studio apartment. We could see the city of Chicago, see the lake. It was beautiful. But as soon as that lease was up, man, we went for the one bedroom. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. One room is way too small. No, 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 no. That, that's, that's a little <laughs> bit on the, uh, it's too much, right? You know? Um, so, um, you know, we've, you know, this is a pressure cooker for everybody. And, We've got to know that it violates, you couldn't, what it is, is we are all born for connection. We are all born for attachment. You know, human beings, we have a relational brain. It comes out hardwired looking for certain behaviors. Babies are looking for connection, right? Without it, they don't thrive. And for our entire life, we are looking for connection. Mm -hmm. And this thing is, the best designed virus to split us to split us off from our attachment. And we're not reptiles. If we were reptiles, COVID would be no big problem. Every reptile socially distances by nature. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, there's my rock sun on. <laughs> you know, and uh, but not so much humans. And I do believe this is uh, there's there's an upside to the downside. Couples, I, I talk about noticing that one of the things you're looking for in addition to these four feelings that tell us we're loved, I talk about in the book, Welcomed with Joy, Worthy and Nourished, Cherished and Protected and Empowered with Choice. One of the big things is, is there signs of the we? Well, guess what? You, you know, you have to, you're going to, COVID is going to show you who's a we and who thinks of themselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I remember dealing with one couple and you can see this too in singles where 
she is not happy that he wants to work out. This was earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to limit myself. Well, there's no we in that statement. And I just remember telling them, you know, you can violate our sense of, of safety, but this is actual, you know, life and death in her mind. I said, it's going to be a long time. That her brain remembers this. And I said, you know, and I, and he looks at me and I said, okay, well, let me put it a different way. This is long. This is the longest path to the bedroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and he got that he got that i said if she feels safe she's going to feel more sexual mm -hmm. i said and if she's not feeling safe you can bank on it this is not going to be a winning scenario for both of you and i said but beyond that you know cherished and protected is all about she's more important than anything else mm -hmm. and if she doesn't feel that you know, it would be like if for most men, they say somebody didn't have my back. Right now, you're not having her back. Mm -hmm. You know, sense. and he got that. He got that. You know, I said, this is, you want to know what cherished and protected looks like? It means saying I won't go to the gym. I'll go and get a gym set and work out in my garage. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and go and get a life cycle and bring it on. <laughs> jog by yourself <laughs> yeah. those are the things um and for and you'll see that and with singles they're going to see it a little earlier in relationships and that's not bad either people you're getting a chance to see who really is partner material who and it gives and it's stopping this incessant swipe left swipe left our culture the single culture got too addicted to the dopamine rushes that were programmed by the apps because they knew the oh my god what's the next best thing out let me get a little dopamine i haven't swiped left in three days oh my god i better go swipe left right um that got way it was so anti-attachment that's not how it is i like the fact that covid has stopped some of that temporarily so maybe there can be a reset what if you know, we could go deeper. I, I remember talking with Paul Carrick Brunson who wrote the preface of my book. He had a matchmaking service in Washington, DC. And he told me something very interesting. It's called The Paradox of Choice by Barry Schwartz. Barry Schwartz came up with the idea that when people have too many choices, they make choices or they have harder times. And when they do, there is less fulfillment with their choices because they're always worried about, did I get the best deal? Mm -hmm. What he found out is when they originally did the research, they would come and they'd set the prospective person out and they would give them six profiles <clears throat> of men or women that would really match. And they would kind of look through it and go, hmm, yeah, okay. And they didn't take it all that seriously because there were six. Right. Mm -hmm. But then what they, and they didn't go on the dates with the same amount of care and they were a little more frivolous and a little less committed. So they stopped giving six, even though they had them for, <clears throat> they gave two, mm -hmm. two. Now it's, oh my God, I've got two choices here. And they took it seriously and they showed up very differently. They found out they had more success matching people when they gave people two choices, mm -hmm. really good choices than six. Wow. Or as opposed to a hundred when you're swiping. <laughs> yes. Yes. And the other person swiping left. And I think the swipe left and the dopamine rush uh, took us out of what attachment is. <clears throat> attachment is learning what's, in, <clears throat> you know, about each other. And I know that, you know, if you think about what goes in, this goes for everybody. There was an experiment many, many years ago. Uh, well, some years ago, I should say, <clears throat> with children at four. They want to know what really creates that bond. <clears throat> what's it, what's it like so they found children with attachment objects attachment objects are you know the bear and the binky and the blanket that you know you can't pry off at bedtime and if they don't have it you're going to go looking for it because they're not going to bed <laughs> <laughs> i mean my son threw one of his his favorite bear into the bark tracks and got ran over and all and then after the train passed she goes you're going to go down and get that I go, well, I'm not going to go to get She goes, he ain't going to bed. Find a car. Go get that thing. I need that thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was got truth. <laughs> I found a garden. We went down on the bar tracks and got the thing, right? 
So uh, and I still can't believe that, but younger man being that I was. And, but the thing is, they, they brought him into these little three and four year olds in this room where there was this big machine. Inside that machine was a carefully disguised scientist or lab assistant. And they asked the child if they, it would be okay to replicate Mr. Binky or Mr. Bear, right? Uh -huh. and, um, and the children that were attached were not all that attached, you know, they weren't greatly attached. They go, oh, yeah, replicate that thing. Uh -huh. But the, the children that were very attached, they had a strong bond. So no, 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 you can't, you can't replicate Miss Binky. She's too special. There was an essence that they had bonded to that was so special and unique that it made a stronger attachment. And what we learned is when people are strongly attached, our systems find an essence to that other person that you can't find elsewhere. Mm. You can't get elsewhere. Yes, you might find, you know, pretty and blonde, or you might find, you know, tall, dark and handsome. You might find doctor or, or whatever, or funnier than all get out, but you won't find there was an essence to them. Mm -hmm. Right? There's an essence to them. Now, if you think about it, what leads to commitment? I, this I fall this falls into cherished and protected when there's an essence you can't find elsewhere then you can't get it elsewhere you commit to it they are cherished they are protected the gateway to commitment is swiping down to see that essence as long as we're swiping left then fear then there's others until we swipe down enough to see wow there's there's just something about this one that is so endearing right mm -hmm. that I can't find it elsewhere that's your gateway to commitment so COVID, by chopping down some of these options, like Paul Brunson did in his dating, mm -hmm. has actually done us a great service. It's actually given us more hope to create situations that are more ripe for lasting love. Mm -hmm. That's the irony uh, of, of COVID. It creates hopelessness, but if played well, if played right, it opens a, a, go, a, a golden gateway to finding that essence in each other. Because we have to, because now we, it doesn't make any sense to swipe left. Now you get to know each other and you just might find someone you love. Mm -hmm. And same way with couples, you know, they know each other, but they may have a chance to, to actually rediscover who each other is. For couples, you know, no, nobody remains the same. Every, you know, I can still, you know, we're, we know from the adult psychology that about every 10 years or so, people have very big identity changes. Nobody, they've tracked people now, Harvard did, found out who people thought they were at 17. They're not, they no longer consider themselves anywhere near like that when they're 65. Uh, I can still remember when I was 21, I was taking a course in college. Uh, and the professor was in marriage and family brought in a young couple that had just got married uh, that summer, right? And I, 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 re I knew him from campus and I go, man, she married him, <laughs> you know? And, you know, just like, wow. And then there was this old couple who were in their late forties. <laughs> and, then, and then there was this couple married 63 years. He was 93 uh -huh. and she was 88. Wow. And I will never forget this one very disrespectful uh, football player looked at the guy and, uh, and asked the 93 year old, so what's, it, so what's it like to be married to the same woman for 63 years? With a tone of derision that the, the, the man picked up. And he looked at the guy and says, well, if you're lucky enough to be married to the same woman, <laughs> for 60 years. And I was, you know, I'm going, oh, I like this guy. <laughs> you know, like him a lot. He, you know, he said, uh, he says, he says, he says, if you think you're married to the same woman for 63 years, you're crazy. He says, my wife has been five different women. Every 10 to 12 years, she changed, and I had to change the marriage. Had to change. And he described the five women he's been married to. Mm -hmm. And this woman is just grinning and beaming 
she feels so loved because what she's been seeing her whole life mm -hmm. a lot of couples they didn't get to see each other i mean you know they got taken off after they got married into childhood with you know raising kids or you know chasing down that degree or that career and they stopped seeing each other they stopped witnessing each other mm -hmm. and they grew and so covid is what it's a great eye opener. My God, who are they now? I didn't know they were that. How can I deal with this? If done well, they can re-witness each other. They can get to know who they are. Oh, this is the version of you. And you can still see that same essence you fell in love with or a new essence you didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. That's the golden gift to re-witness each other, to see each other. When you, yes, you're stuck and you can't ignore, but what's under the surface? If done well, COVID can be a great way of reigniting a, a relationship. So let's say you're in one of those relationships now where you're, you're, you're a couple, but you know, all your fears are coming out, your insecurities. And so you're acting up, if you will, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or pushing the other person's buttons over and over again. How do you start that conversation to actually negotiate and to kind of really restart or begin again. You know, I'll be honest with you, there's two things. First off, you know, when you're giving feedback, <laughs> you know, you, you got to stay away from the cookies of criticism, defensiveness, contempt, and stonewalling, especially criticism. Every time you leave with a harsh startup, where couples research shows us that 96% of the time, you're not going to have a very good response back. You don't get it attuned back. You know, the big thing is to kind of just the feedback loop is, well, what I noticed, like a, an objective, I noticed that, you know, we're not as close as we used to be. And the story I tell myself is, I wonder if we, when did we stop seeing each other? Mm. And that makes me feel really sad and sometimes lonely. And what I would like is for us to take some time, 15 minutes a day to get to know each other to get to, to, to have time with each other's day. And that's one of the big things that we know that couples that are strong have these stress reducing conversations. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes a day, they just talk about what their day is. Feelings checking in, they take each other's side. No talking about the relationship. That's not stress reducing. <laughs> <laughs> but, they, but they're just noticing each other. Now, if, if it's deeper than that, they may need some professional help because they've been making the same moves. You know, every time you know, she feels that he walks away because he feels overloaded and, you know, and then when she feels overloaded, he feels overloaded, he feels like he has no voice. When he has no voice, he walks away and then she feels unworthy. And these are old childhood wounds. And then when she feels unworthy, she comes after him because he's, she's anxious and he, you know, and this stuff has to get worked out a little professionally. So they know how to, to, to circumvent that, that, same recurring thing. Most couples are fighting about safety and security uh, from the point of view of how their five-year-old thought about it. They're working with the same old deal, right? And uh, that pattern needs to be yeah. negotiated. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most couples, when they get in a fight, they're, they're, they're adaptive children. They're a five or seven-year-old talking, you know, how they protect themselves. And once you can get them to recognize it and they can both make an agreement to let those kids <laughs> stay out of their relationship. I mean, if I get really, really triggered, I have a really mouthy eight-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to be the boss of me. <laughs> I am the expert. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's, and, and that's how you get into some of these little funny little games that people play. Sometimes it does take deeper work. Um, that's why some of these couples have come to me because they couldn't work it out themselves. It doesn't mean you can't, but if you have, you will need someone external, someone that's got the skills to do it, you know, that can see the best in you, but also notice, you know, all couples, uh, what they're dealing with is I call these missing rights. You know, they're always dealing one person didn't have a right to have their needs met. So when she doesn't get her needs met, you know, she really criticized him. Meanwhile, when he feels criticized, he feels he has no right to create his own experience. So, you know, so he doesn't know what to do. 
And then so he doesn't feel like meeting your needs. And now we're, um, we're going down. These are old childhood wounds and they deal with it that way. Sometimes you do need a more professional help. Mm-hmm. So that's my, but it, it doesn't mean it has to be the end of the relationship. It just might be the end of marriage 1.0, mm-hmm. but 2.0 is possible. Because right. most couples, you know, they love, you know, I know he loves me. I know she loves me. But when I hear I know, I know that they're not attuned to each other because nobody wants to know their love. They want to feel want their to love. to feel it. Exactly. I want to feel it. Yes. And guys, uh, uh, you're hearing the word feelings a lot from me. I hate saying it if you're listening to this, but it is feelings that's running your brain. It's feelings. You know, uh, when I'm dealing with couples, I always ask them for the five-year-old soundbite. And it's always, what if kids deal with feelings? I mean, you know, some time ago, uh, I was dealing with a couple and she goes, you know, I think we've got this vibrational mismatch. And somewhere in his vortices and my vortices, there's this vibrational, and she's going off. And when, and she goes, and I think sometimes Mercury and retrograde, I'm going, oh my God, we got Mercury and retrograde now. <laughs> and I'm listing in for about, three minutes and I don't have a clue what's really bothering her. Mm -hmm. And I look over at him and he's worried. He knows he's in trouble. He wants to fix it and he has no clue, right? Mm -hmm. And I look and I said, so, okay, so vibration, that's cool. You know, we've all all heard of Abraham. What? How would a five-year-old say that? And she looks and she drops into her body. She goes, I just want a playmate. Oh my God. You could see his whole shoulders go, oh my God, I can, okay, I can do that. I can, I can be a playmate, fix the vibration of the universe. Not so much, you know, you know, oh my God, playmate. Finally, I know what to do. And, and that's where, you know, when you drop into that five-year-old, it's always feelings. I feel lonely. I just want to play my, you know, I just want to feel safe. I want to have a say. That's it. Beautiful. So any last advice on how to make the most of this time? You know, we can, I, I have a, I, you know, I, it was about three weeks into it. And I looked at all the possible things that could go wrong. And I woke up at three in the morning for 15 minutes. And I called myself and I said, I am not going to let fear run me. All I know is I've learned when fear runs you, nothing good happens. This is when you get stampedes and all this other thing. My animals do. So my feeling is uh, do not let fear run you. You've got to be able to drop into your body and also drop into your higher self. We have more resources, resources than we know, you know, one of my great statements that I learned while studying neurolinguistic program, NLP, and I've banked on it ever since, is there's no such thing as an unresourceful person, right. only an unresourceful state. Mm-hmm. If you can get three degrees of difference between you and that state, that I am not the state, if you can get into that observer zone and say, hmm, my. Isn't it interesting that of all the experiences I could be having here during COVID, I'm having this experience. Mm. I wonder how I'm creating that experience. Because experience is experience, right? It isn't necessarily reality. If you're a couple, you say, I wonder how we're creating that couple. Mm-hmm. And in my book, I mean, in the book, Safe to Love Again, there's a reason I, my first story out of the gate is a story about Paul. He came to me very... Uh, anxious, twice divorced, and he couldn't figure out why in a family where everybody was securely, you know, attached, you know, brother and sister, 20, 25 year married, mom and dad married 50. He had two divorces. He was the anxious one. Hmm. And there, and he told me it came from one incident when he was like four, they were at a camp fire. He had world-class parents and his dad, for some reason, grabbed him and beat on him. He just beat on it, right? One, and he said, and the phrase is, he just turned on me. He turned on me. 
And he says, and dad never did anything before or after like that. And after that, he was always looking out for when does love turn on me? In two marriages of 10 years, the woman got tired of the distrust of, I'm tired of you waiting for the day I'm going to turn against you. And they just got walked and they walked away. He knew he had driven them away. We were working with that imprint. When does love turn? Why did my dad have one bad moment out of 53 years? When he came to my workshop, he brought his brother, who was there to be Mr. Supportive Older Brother, right? And I met him. And during the shares the first day, Paul gets up and shares about this incident at four with his dad turning against him. And I'm watching his brother's jaw drop to the floor. And I'm going, wow, that is an interesting reaction by the brother, right? Because, you know, I know from, you know, families that no two childs ever grows up in the same family, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, even if it looks that way. And he breaks in, he says, Paul, he says, that, that's why you're so screwed up. And he used another word, actually. <laughs> you know, says, that's why you're so, you're twice divorced. He says, oh my God, Paul, you got it all wrong. He says, I was nine, you were four. He says, we were at a campfire. You got too close to the fire and your pant legs caught on fire. Dad wasn't turning on you. He was beating out the flame so you didn't turn into a marshmallow. Oh. But that's what his brain made of it. Mm -hmm. That was an experience, not reality. And I swear you could have heard a pin drop, a couple of gas. And that was the, and I go, wow. We've been working in these sessions on something that was a pure creation of a four-year-old mind, pre-operational, bleeding, you know, boogeyman, tooth fairies. It's a crapshoot what it'll make up, right? And it made up that. Uh, now that's an experience, but it didn't have anything to do with reality. If you can get that sort of observer mode with COVID and go, hmm, whatever I'm experiencing, whether it's hopelessness or you know despondency or fear, you go, gosh, I wonder how I'm creating that experience. You just, and how can I create a better experience? If you can create that observer zone with any experience, including COVID, you are in the driver of your incarnation. I love it. Thank you yeah. so much, Dr. Gary. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, and if there's any message I can give to everybody out there, you know, y'all deserve love, you know, and you also deserve to feel empowered. You have a right to feel empowered with choice to have a voice and do not let this virus defeat you. Do not let it take away your choices. No, Yes, we all have some that are being taken with us, all, you know, but that doesn't, but we can choose to have a victorious attitude about a mask. We can choose to see it as protecting other people, not just about ourselves. There's all sorts of ways to create a better experience. Just find the one that really works for you and your beloved or your life if you're single, you know, create an experience that's, that will set the table for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Kimberly.